Hey there, and thank you for joining me on the Retro Game Couch. And in today's video, we're going to check out the Fairchild Channel F, or in my case, the Saba Video Play System, as it was sold in Germany. This is the world's first cartridge-based video game system, which makes it a pretty unique part of video game history. Now, it only outputs RF video. So in this video, we're going to install a mod that converts that RF video to composite video. Should be a very interesting mod. So let's go. I have opened up the computer and I've liberated the mainboard of the shielding. The shielding is out of this world. It is completely surrounded by shielding. This plug from the transformer doesn't really fit on the mainboard, but with a little bit of wiggling, it does work. So before we install the mod, let's see if the system works. I have the cartridge port removed and I also removed the joysticks. It doesn't need the cartridge port or the joysticks to work. So let's turn it on and see if it works at all. A light turns on here but nothing is displaying here. I think this LED should turn on as well. So it doesn't seem to be working. So besides a modding video, I guess it's a repair video as well. Let's investigate. I found a website online that lists all the parts on the board and has schematics of the board, which is really useful. So this seems to be the CPU, the Fairchild 3850. Let's find a ground pin. And I think the joystick port probably yeah, has a ground pin, which we can use. Let's turn on the oscilloscope and start probing on the CPU. It's still turned on right now. So pin one should be a clock signal. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's totally flatlined. Pin two is right. So we expect some activity here as well. Nothing on pin two. Pin three, VDD five volts. So pin three. Zilch, nothing. This isn't going well. VGG, 12 volts. Oh, there we go. At least we have voltage. Let me check how much voltage. Uh, DC, pin 4, and ground. Yeah, 12 volts. So that works. So we're missing the 5 volts. So let's focus on the power part of things. Let me open up the schematic. There we go. Transformer. Uh, bridge rectifiers and then 7805 which is a 5 volt regulator I think yeah 5 volts and then there is also a 78C12 which is a 12 volt regulator okay so we have two regulators let's just measure so this is 10 volts and this is 16 volts okay so here are the two bridge rectifiers that we saw on the schematic. So AC voltage coming in, the bridge rectifiers, then here is the 12 volt regulator and this is the 5 volt regulator. So let's measure the 12 volt regulator first. The middle pin is ground, 19 volts in and 12 volts out. So the 12 volt regulator seems to be working. To measure the 5 volt regulator over here, we need to turn over the board. So let me do that now. Voltage is set to DC, these are the two pins this is input so 13.4 volts in and then this should be 5 volts 0 0.02 volts so it looks like the like the regulator is broken let's hook up two barge wires and insert 5 volts into the system and see if that fixes the problem the two barge wires are connected now I'm curious to see the system is currently turned off. What happens if I just turn on the five volt rail? And as you can see, something immediately happens on the screen. Now, what happens if we also supply the 12 volts and then maybe reset? Yeah, it's asking which game we want to play. So it's definitely the five volt regulator that was broken. Now the system is working, let's see what it should actually look like on the CPU. So pin 1 was the clock signal, we get a very nice 2 MHz clock signal. And then pin 2 was right, you get a very nice signal there as well. And pin 3 was 5 volts, that works too. And then pin 4 was 12 volts and that's off the charts. Yeah, so that's working now. I do have a 5 volt regulator that might fit the original one, so let's find out if that works.
the new regulator is in place let's solder it in and then test the system here's the system check 12 volt regulator was working this one is now replaced video is connected and power is connected let's hook everything up and see if anything appears on the screen without any external power inserted there we go <laughs> it's fixed great now we can finally start modding the design for this little converter board comes from the wiki page on channel f.se and this is where the sponsor of today's video comes into play pcb way I downloaded the design files from the wiki and uploaded them to the website of PCBWay. They automatically scan the design file for the correct settings and after that you are free to customize these settings to your likings. Besides PCBs they also do PCB assembly, flexible PCBs, CNC machining, 3D printing and more. So if you're like me and you need a custom PCB from time to time for your retro projects, be sure to check out PCBWay. The problem with this little board and the wiki that I found it on is that it describes how to install this in the original channel F and I have the Saba version which is the German version which is a different board. Now I have been able to find a 15 kilohertz signal which seems to be the video signal so let's try and see if tapping from that point into this gives us any signal. Let me set that up. Alright here is how I hooked everything up. I'm taking 5 volts from the regulator directly. This is ground going to the voltage input of the little board. I'm taking that 15 kilohertz signal from that third resistor that we found. This is going to the composite input. And then composite output and ground is going to a composite plug. And this is the plug that was previously plugged into the RF converter. But this now goes directly into the monitor. All right, everything is ready to go. I have the RF cable unhooked, so no RF signal is coming out of this board. It's just a little converter board. Let's plug everything in and see if anything happens on the monitor. And there we go. <laughs> it works. It's outputting composite video. There is a little trim pod here, so maybe we can do some little adjustments. It's clearing up nicely. There we go. That's looking pretty neat. The mod does tell you to pull some bits away from the board here. To disable the RF modulator, I need to desolder one leg of this coil and these two resistors here. As you can see, the coil is lifted from the board and then these two resistors are also freed from the board with one of their legs. Now what will happen if we turn it back on again. Now it's black and white so we did something to make it worse. Also I don't think the video signal is any better than it was before. Yeah reconnecting the coil gives us color again. Black and white. Color. Let me reconnect the coil. So this is how it looks now and if I disconnect this little resistor while it's on this light will turn off but the screen will get worse. For some reason. I don't know man. This looks better to me. I think I like this better. I'm going to reconnect everything. I removed all the RF cables and the RF pass report that is now the RCA jack and the RCA out that long cable is gone as well. In the original setup the power went to a pass-through port on the shielding and then went to a little connector and then went to this plug. So I removed that and soldered it together because I'm not going to put the shielding back. And I need to find a nice place for this mod and I think I will put it right there on a little bit of foam. So let me do that and I'm going to reconnect the speaker and then put everything back together and then we can finally play a game on it. Oh, incidentally, the mod also supports sound, but I don't want to cut two more uh, RCA plugs into the case. The default speaker, this one, is just fine. The mod is in place. I put some hot melt glue on the speaker so it won't go anywhere and some protection so it doesn't short anything out. So let's solder this back to the board and let's assemble this. 
While trying to reconnect the flat cables of the cartridge port, they fell apart. I tried fixing them with double-sided tape, but they were just too far gone. I decided to cut them off entirely and solder 22 wires to the back of the cartridge port and solder these directly to the board. All the wires of the cartridge port are soldered to the back and to the board. And I inserted a cartridge, which is the game Bowling. So now when we start up the system, we get bowling. So the cartridge port is fixed. All right, let's play some bowling for this video. The ball will keep going left and right until I press up and then it will go towards the pins and then I can rotate and change the direction of the ball. That's a strike. <laughs> nice. So this was a closer look at the Fairchild Channel F, the world's first cartridge based video game system. And what was supposed to be a simple modding video turned out to be a fully fledged repair video. And I got it all sorted and I got it modded and I really like the end result. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already. That helps out the channel a lot. We're very close to 20k subscribers, which is awesome. Consider becoming a patron. That helps me out a lot. And I hope to see you next time on the Retro Game Couch.